Hello, and welcome to MSC Kids Online. We are so happy that you joined us today as we dive into the story together. We really miss seeing you on the weekends, but if you would leave your name or a photo of you and your family watching below, we would love to connect with you. I know I'm super excited about what is in store for today, so I'm gonna pray us in and then we will start. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this wonderful day that you have blessed us with. I thank you that we have the chance to connect over technology. I pray that you will speak to us today and that we will learn more about you. We love you, God. Amen. Hey, Mountain Springs kids, Miss Judy here. How's everybody doing? I sure do miss seeing your smiling faces. Been praying for you out of my daily walk with God today. I was just thinking of each and every one of you. Looking forward to the day we can get back together and worship God. In the meantime, stay healthy, be safe, know that God is with you. God bless each and every one of you, and we'll see you soon. Well, welcome, kids. Hey, today's story, we're going to be hearing about Daniel in the lion's den. I've got my awesome friends here to be able to help me with this story today. I've got my friend Ryan. Say hi, Ryan. I got Miss Vanessa. Say hi, Vanessa. Hi. Miss Kathy. Hello. And Mr. Noah. Hi. So my friends are going to be helping me act out this story, and I want you guys to act it out at home with us, too. You're going to need a couple of characters in your story today. You're going to need two or three officials. Can I see my officials? Two or three officials. You're going to need a Daniel. And you're going to need a king. And then, do we have our, we have our lions? We need a couple of lions. We don't, we don't have actual lions, but these are some pretty scary creatures, aren't they? So I want you guys to make sure that you have these and you're ready. All right, who's ready to jump into the story of Daniel and the lion's den? Okay, here we go. So we're in Daniel chapter six. You guys can follow along as my acting friends are gonna act out the story together today. Daniel six, or chapter, verse one. Not chapter one, <laughs> verse one, here we go. <laughs> Darius the Mede decided to divide the kingdom into 120 provinces. That's more than I can count on my fingers. And he appointed a high officer to rule over each province. The king also chose Daniel. Say hi, Daniel. Hi. And two others as administrators to supervise the high officers and protect the king's interests. Daniel soon proved himself more capable than any of the other administrators and high officers. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire kingdom. Good job, Daniel. Then the other administrators and high officers began searching for some fault. Okay, go ahead and talk to yourselves. Talk to yourselves. You've got to create a plan. You've got to create a plan. They wanted to find fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs, but they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn him for. He was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. Verse 5, so they concluded our only chance of finding grounds for accusing Daniel will be in connection with the rules of his religion. Now, what's religion? It's, it's like our relationship with God, isn't it? Yeah. So the administrators and high officers went to the king. Okay, go to the king. And they said, long live King Darius. Long live King Darius. Thank you. We are all in agreement. We administrators, officials, high officers, advisors, and governors that the king should make a law, a law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. 
and now your majesty issue and sign this law so it cannot be changed. Oh, he signed it. So King Darius signs the law. Yay, the officials got the law. But when Daniel learns that the law had been signed, yeah, shake your head, no, Daniel, you don't like that. He went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room. With its windows open towards Jerusalem, he prayed three times a day. Can everyone hold up three fingers? Three times a day, just as he has always done, giving thanks to God. Can we all say, thank you, God? Thank you, God. Then the officials went together to Daniel's house and found him praying and asked for God's help. So they went straight to the king and reminded him about his law. Did you not sign a law that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions? Yes. <sighs> yes, the king replied. That decision still stands. It is an official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked. <sighs> they were tricky, weren't they? Then they told the king, well, that man Daniel... One of the captives from Judah, he's ignoring you and your law. He still prays to his God three times a day. Hold up three. Three times a day. Hearing this, the king was deeply troubled. Shake your head, king. He, oh, he's all troubled. And he tried to think of a way to save Daniel. He spent the rest of the day looking for a way to get Daniel out of this predicament. He's like looking over the law. He's trying to see some way that Daniel can be saved. In the evening, the men went together to the king and said, Your majesty, you know that according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, no law that the king signs can be changed. So at last, the king had to give the order. He gave the orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the den of lions. Arrest him. All right. Go arrest him. Let's see. Kids at home, make sure that you're acting this out too. Make sure that you're arresting your Daniel and throwing him into the den of lions. No, no, no. Oh, the king is so upset. The king said, may your God whom you serve so faithfully rescue you. A big stone, or in our case, a blanket, was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. The king sealed the stone with his own royal seal and the seals of his nobles so that no one could rescue Daniel. Isn't that kind of sad? I guess not for you officials. <laughs> You're the ones that wanted this to happen, aren't you? These little monkey officials. <laughs> All right. So in verse 18, it says, Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. He refused his usual entertainment and couldn't sleep at all that night. Well, very early the next morning, the king got up and hurried out to the lion's den. Hurry to the lion's den. When he got there, he called out in anguish. Daniel, Daniel. Daniel, servant of the living God. Was your God, whom you serve so faithfully, able to rescue from the lions? Yup. <gasps> Yay. Daniel said, yup. He was, he answered, long live the king. Can you say long live the king? Long live the king. All right, get out of the lion's den there. Get out of the lion's den. He said, my God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight. And I have not wronged you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed. Go ahead and dance up and down, little king. Dun, 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 dun. Woohoo! He was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be lifted from the den. Not a single scratch was found on him, for he had trusted in his God. Then the king gave orders to arrest the men who had maliciously accused Daniel. Arrest those guys. Arrest them. Arrest them. Do you know what they did? He had them thrown into the lion's den. Throw them in the lion's den. Along with their wives and their children. And the lions leaped on them. Oh, we have to have the lions leap. The lions leaped on them and tore them apart before they even hit the floor of the den. Then King Darius 
sent this message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. Peace and prosperity to you. Verse 26, I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble. Everyone tremble with me. Tremble with fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. Verse 27, he rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. Can we show those lions again? Now kids, I don't know about you, but these seem like some pretty scary lions, right? But God rescued Daniel. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. So guys, I want to ask you guys some questions. You can bring those back out here. You can bring your, your friends back out. So, so in the story, who was the bad guy? Who was the bad guy? Um, Go ahead. Uh, the officials. The officials are little monkeys over here, right? Who was the good guy? Daniel. Daniel. And who was on Daniel's side? King Darius. King Darius. King Darius was on Daniel's side. Was, do you think that Daniel was loyal to God? Yes. Yes, yes he was. Because even though the king had to say that he couldn't pray, Daniel still did it, right? How many times did he pray? Three, Three times a day. That's a lot. So what do you think God did because of Daniel's loyalty? Um, he saved him from the lions. He saved him from the lions. What about you guys? Are we pretty loyal to God? Yeah. yeah. We're pretty loyal to him, right? You know, and so that's what, what we can be able to get out of this story, is that if we're loyal to God, he will be loyal to us, right? And he will provide for us. He will protect us. So what are some ways that we can be loyal to God? By worshiping him. By worshiping him. Good. What else? Vanessa? We can read the Bible. Read the Bible. Miss Kathy, do you have a way that we can be loyal to God? We can obey his commandments. Obey his commandments. And Noah? We could pray to him every day. We can pray to him every day. See, these are some great ways to be loyal to God. Well, guys, I want to thank you. Thank you for, for showing us today through Daniel that we can be loyal to God. Even when things get tough, when things get difficult and don't go our way. Let me go and pray for us. And then kids at home, I want to encourage us. Let's spend some time, maybe with our stuffed animal friends. Let's spend some time with each other and ask some questions. You guys ready? Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are at work, God, that you are working in our lives. Lord, we thank you just for the loyalty that Daniel showed. God, even though the officials wanted him to be thrown into the den of the lions, he was still loyal to you, Lord. He still showed that loyalty to pray to you three times a day. And yeah, there were some consequences. But God, you protected him because of that loyalty, just like how you protect us, just like how you are with us. You provide for us when we're loyal to you. So Lord, help us to connect with our family during this time that we get to ask some small group questions and be with us throughout the rest of our days. We love you. So we pray, and everyone said, Amen. 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 Wow, wasn't that an amazing story about Daniel in the lion's den? I know I'm super encouraged to stand up for God. Let's do something really fun together. Let's all stand up and shout, I love God. Are you ready? One, two, three. I love God. I know you can do better than that. Let's try again. I love God. Great job, everyone. That was amazing. Now, before you leave, make sure you talk to your family about what you learned today. And don't worry, we have questions provided to get you started. Bye, have a good week.